Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. Today we are going to expand on the concepts of canons and we are going to learn a specific tutorial of a specific song by Conrad Kuntz. It is his 95th canon out of 200 and the book is his Opus 14 collection of 200 short canons for piano. In a previous video we did some exercises to build hand independence and I'll link that on the screen here if you missed it and a canon was one of the five exercises so we're going to be building on that quite a bit today obviously 200 canons is a lot we're only going to do one of them today but I think you'll enjoy the resource. We also did just recently, like just the last video, we did a video on why canons are so useful as a piano player and inventions in general for building hand independence. So if you missed that video, you might wanna check that out as well. Anyway, let's jump into it. So these short canons start about at a beginner level, like basically straight up beginner, and they move through difficulty all the way up until about a grade two to three level. So I highly recommend reading through these as sight reading practice. You could make a goal of it to spend five to 10 minutes each day reading through a canon. And I think what you'll find is that it, it'll help your, your note reading, but it'll also help your hand independence skills as well. Let me know too if you guys are interested in me doing like a playthrough of any of these canons. I do have a couple other playthrough videos on the go right now. Like I, I'm still meaning to finish the Microcosmos by Bell Bartok. But if there is any interest in doing this one, I can consider that as well. The collection of piano exercises we're going to be looking at today is called 200 Short Two-Part Canons. It's Opus 14 and it's by Conrad Kuntz. So the specific piece we're going to be playing is actually number 95. It's in F major. And it's actually in the RCM syllabus for grade two as a list C pieces because it's a, it's a canon. List C's are canons and inventions. So if you wanted to practice this song for like an official Royal Conservatory exam, you totally could. These piano canons are not that famous and Conrad Kuntz was not a famous composer. He was a composer and music director in the 1800s. He was German and he actually wrote a lot of music for male choirs. But Fame isn't everything, right? We're not always gonna learn pieces on this channel that are like super, super famous. A lot of the times, really good exercises can be found even if it's not like Mozart or Bach. So this isn't exactly the kind of music you're gonna learn and then show it off to all your friends. Uh, this is like, these are just exercises to help you learn the other songs that you're gonna show off to all your friends. We've talked about piano canons a few times on this channel, actually. We did the previous video, which was completely dedicated to piano canons, and we also did an analysis and a tutorial of canon in D, which is probably, not probably, it is the most famous musical canon. But just for the purpose of today's tutorial, I wanna do a quick, super quick recap on what a canon is. So a canon is a type of invention, and inventions are pieces based on imitation. So canons are just imitation pieces, and the catch with canons is that they usually involve exact imitation. So what that means in piano, and you can see this in the music, is that one hand plays the leader part and the other hand plays the follower part, directly copying it, but like, I don't know, like a few, like one or two or three bars at a delay. Now, because both your hands are doing like copycat parts and interesting overlapping, hopefully you can see why canons make such great hand independence exercises on the piano. So anyway, let's move on to the tutorial. Okay, so here is the sheet music for the canon I just played. So let's do a little bit of an analysis of it. So first of all, you can see this rhythmic motif. You've kind of got like a like a 16th note dot situation with a bunch of quarter notes. You can see that like pattern happening over and over and over again in the, in the song. So that's why we call it a motif. It's just like a recurring pattern. And if you remember from our musical fruit rhythm exercise, you'll probably notice that this is a pattern that we talked about. The dotted eighth plus 16th note, where we say coconut. This is a mnemonic device to help you remember the rhythm. If this is your eighth note, coconut, dun, dun, coconut, dun, dun, just a, I don't know, 
a little easy verbal way to remember that pattern. Okay, so now let's take a really quick look at the key signature. I think I already said what key the song's in, but let's figure it out anyway. We've got a B flat in the key signature, and it looks like the song ends on an F, and it starts on an F. So we're in the key of F major here. F major has a B flat. Now let's look at our time signature. It's in three, four, which is a little bit more difficult than four, four time for some people. So this is three, four, but it also has an upbeat. Okay, so when you're in three, four time, every bar adds up to three beats. But what an upbeat does is it's, a, it's an incomplete measure. So you'll notice there's only one beat here and then it gets into the main part of the song. So upbeats mean we're not starting on beat one, we actually start on beat three. So if you're counting yourself into this, you would say one, two, da, da, and then you'd start playing. And just scanning through, you'll notice this like beat three upbeat situation over and over and over again. And they're always connected to a slur. So you're gonna be, throughout this entire piece, you're gonna be slurring beat three to beat one over and over and over. And I just want you to keep that in mind when you start playing it, especially hands together. Because once your hands get together, it's easy to forget those little details like slurs. So store that away in your mental database. So now let's talk about the canon aspect of this canon. Let's, let's hunt for the imitation. So clearly at the beginning, you can see this little part, the left hand is the leader and the right hand is kind of like a little bit behind, a little bit delayed. It's delayed by three beats, but it's playing the exact same thing. And then what you'll notice kind of about the halfway point over in here, we stop imitating exactly for a second and the hands kind of like come together in unison a little bit. And then Mr. Coons flips everything around for us where all of a sudden now we got the right hand doing the leading and the left hand doing the following. And that's one of the reasons I really like doing this invention is because it's really balanced that way. You get to not only work on your left hand imitation skills, but also your right hand imitation skills. The easiest way to learn canons is to learn them hands separately. Because if you're, if you're insecure about either hand on their own, putting them together is gonna to be an absolute nightmare because it's more co complicated than just doing chords. So I would play it through like that because the melody in each hand has an important and specific pattern of slurs. So it starts with a slur and then da da. So there's like two little two note slurs in there and then you got the staccatos rest slurs. So you need those breaks in between the slurs. And if you don't get comfortable with those parts, the, the first thing that's gonna go when you put it hands together is going to be those details, like the staccatos and rests and stuff. And these details define the melody. So we really wanna make sure we don't lose those. And once we're comfortable with doing it hands separate, you and you don't feel like it's such a huge struggle, then you can start to put it hands together. And again, since playing canons is such a brain workout, Please give yourself a chance to do it correctly by slowing way, 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 way down. And besides, our top tempo is a moderato, so I mean, we don't need to rush through this anyway. And the nice thing about this canon is that the faster parts, like right in there, that happens while the other hand is like basically resting and playing slow, so it's a little bit of back and forth. And while you do have to multitask, you end up with more mental space to focus on the difficult parts because one hand's easier while the other hand's more complicated. So when I first started trying this out on the piano, I probably went like, whoa, that is dramatic. Let me just, probably went like 70 or something like that. Just to make sure I'm doing everything correctly that no slur or staccato gets left behind. And that is all for today's tutorial. I hope you have a lot of fun playing through it and I hope you get a chance to explore some of the other canons as well to make your hands better, better at playing piano. Uh, there's our music broccoli of the day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and we'll catch you guys next time. I'm gonna sit on my cat. I'm gonna sit on my cat. My cat's just staring at the window, whacking her tail angrily. You just hear the stuff like in the background, it's her tail.